Once in a while, I like to fool people and pretend that I'm a lead guitarist. Even though I've been playing keyboards for years, it's fun to experiment with the different tones that you can get out of guitar sounds and a Scream 4 sound destruction unit. You can see here that I've got a sampler loaded with an acoustic guitar patch. Now if I select this sampler, I can go to the Create menu, and I'm going to choose Scream 4 Sound Destruction, and I'm going to open up my presets by clicking on Browse Patch, and in the Reason Factory sound bank, you'll find a Scream 4 Patches folder, which has another folder called Instrument Tweaks. And in here, I'm going to choose American Lead. Now, this will give me a sort of saturated sound so that that acoustic guitar now sounds like a lead guitar. All we need is a little bit of delay and reverb, and I think we're set. So let's go into the mixer, and let's insert a reverb. Now we can use Send 1 to add a little bit of dimension. And secondly, let's insert a digital delay. So there's our delay. And now let's increase Send Level 2. and play some guitar. This is where it all began with life. Before there were MIDI clips, there were audio clips. Life does some pretty amazing things with audio. It's easy to forget after a while, you could start to take it for granted. But there is a before life and after life. Things that used to take time in other software or hardware can be done really fast in life and usually while the sequencer is still running. You can load audio samples in formats including AIF, WAVs, MP3, OG Vorbis, OG FLAC and FLAC. Which makes it really good for DJs or anyone working with a more collage system of collecting sounds from different sources. And it's about the warp markers, time stretching, elastic audio where a sample's pitch and tempo are no longer connected. With these warp markers we can We can manipulate the timing of a clip, we can use them to create subtle adjustments before or after beats, we use to fix errors, we can use them to, to create very strange time stretching. Yeah, I like that. Audio clips can be looped, like this one, or they can be one-shots, like this one now. You can change loop lengths, as you saw, start and end points can be changed on the fly. You can transpose them. Change the gain. You can change so song tempo and the audio will follow along. You can use 
groove settings to apply different rhythmic values. You can apply automation at clip level. So if I wanted to, I could perhaps apply some transposition to this one as if it isn't suffering enough already. You can apply real-time audio effects. You can select groups of clips simultaneously and apply changes to a number of clips at the same time. You can see here, it's showing all the commonly available parameters for these two clips. But as I said, this is really what live is still all about. It's the ability to load audio, manipulate audio, do radical things, do subtle things, and all in real time, or in front of an audience, or without having to break your workflow at all. We've got the signal flow down. We know the geography. So let's start talking about all these crazy buttons and knobs. It seems like everywhere you look on this interface, there's going to be something to tweak. And you know what? That's exactly right. And all of these buttons and knobs have a very specific function. So let's start looking at them. And before we do that, let me load in a preset. Go down to factory, drum sets. How about the breakbeat kit? And as it loads, you can see all of the samples that it's loading with the UBS or UltraBeat sample extension. These are samples that are unique to UltraBeat. Next, I'm going to switch on Voice Auto Select. It's located right here in the upper left-hand corner, and you just click it on. Voice Auto Select is used for editing. So when I select that voice on my MIDI keyboard, notice how UltraBeat's faceplate shows me what voice I'm playing and updates all the settings for that voice. So if you want to do any editing at all, make sure Voice Auto Select is on. Let me show you the on-off switches for the sound generators. Each sound generator has its own switch that can be activated on a per-voice basis. Let's take a closer look. When it's red, just like this, it means that it's on. When it's gray, it means that it's off. And when it's off, all of the controls on this oscillator will change color. Notice that when it's off, the controls darken. And it works the same for the noise source and for oscillator too. We're editing the kick drum, and you can tell that because the kick drum's voice assignment is highlighted in red. If I select the snare, now it's highlighted. Notice that the snare and the kick use different sound generators with different settings. Now, if I wanted to add some noise to the snare, I would just turn it on and make some tweaks. We'll talk about sound design in another video. Learning about these on-off switches is the first step in doing some voice editing. And remember, you won't know what voice you're editing unless you first turn on the Voice Auto Select button, which is located in the upper left-hand corner of the UltraBeat interface. Give it a try. We're back with our editorial. Well, so to speak. Yeah, viditorial. Vid viditorial. Uh, so what did you think of this video episode? It's a lot of work. That's yeah. what I think. But what we want to know is what did you think of it? And until next time, I'm Paul Garay. And I'm Derek K. Miller. Happy recording. <laughs>